So good afternoon, and uh, on behalf of the Internet Day team uh, in Thai Delhi, welcome to all of you to this session today. Uh, we are delighted to uh, have here as a special guest the Honorable Minister for IT and BT for Karnataka, uh, Sri Priyank Kharge. Uh, he has been a, a longtime friend of the startup ecosystem, uh, and many of his programs that were started in the previous tenure actually went, uh, you know, were sustained and grew, and he's now looking to grow them further uh, in the ecosystem, and that's, I think, a good testament of, you know, uh, providing really good, solid programs for the ecosystem, uh, and I'll just mention one. There are many. Elevate was one that uh, uh, Minister Karge had put together early, and that was a flagship program that invested in startups without taking equity, you know, anywhere from five to 50 lakhs uh, from the Karnataka corpus, and you know, hundreds of startups got uh, funding, early stage funding, almost the first money in on almost every case that I remember. Uh, and uh, you know, we had thousands of applications, obviously, because it's a very desirable program, and many of them went on to get investments after. So you know, that's a, a program that you know, has lasted uh, since his first tenure, and we hope uh, we'll have opportunity to hear from him on what his plans are for the startup ecosystem. So before uh, we get uh, uh, Minister Karge to say a few words, uh, I'd like to invite Madan Padaki as well, uh, president of Thai Bangalore, on stage to help us uh, welcome the minister. And then Madan and uh, Shri Karge will have a few interactions, and you know, it'll be an open audience as well. So welcome, Madan. <laughs> Namaskara, <laughs> good afternoon, and uh, sir, a very warm welcome uh, again to the Thai community. Uh, this is the first uh, occasion that we, have, we are having since you took up the office a few months ago uh, to engage with the community here. And uh, for me, you always were an entrepreneur, has been an entrepreneur, will be an entrepreneur. It's always a, a phenomenal. Uh, experience engaging with you because you are able to dive deep and also zoom out at the same time and we really look forward to the magic that Ravi was talking about in their initial terms as the ITBT minister and then sub subsequently with the work that happened in the social welfare. The other very interesting dots that can be connected, not only is he the ITBT minister but he is also the minister for rural development in Panchayat Raj and connecting these two I think will open up a massive opportunity. So on behalf of all of us. Uh, we wish you the very best in this journey, in this innings, and look forward to working with you. May I request uh, all of us to, uh, given that this is the first occasion for us to uh, heartily welcome him and wish him the very best. Let's all stand up for a... I, I invite my board colleagues to join us on the stage. Uh, they would have typically welcomed him with a bouquet or a shawl or a peta, but he has this policy which says that, listen, I will not accept anything except books. Uh, so we're going to definitely send you a bunch of books your way uh, from all of us. Uh, I just wanted to have our board colleagues, Ravi, just welcome you. <laughs> Satya is a part of the gang. We'll request him for some opening comments and it will be an interaction. So, to, sh to seek your thoughts, opinions, and ideas on what we can do. Sir. Thank you so much, uh, Madan and Ravi. Elarigo Namskara. And uh, like Mr. Madan said, it is a little bit unusual for uh, a felicitation like this. I don't accept. Uh, garlands and uh, shawls or anything, I accept books because I run probably the most number of libraries in the country, in the rural areas, and every book that you give, every book that you give goes back directly to those libraries. It's called, I've uh, called it Arivu Kendra. Arivu means knowledge or curiosity. So that's where I send my uh, books. So that's why uh, any of you 
your intent to facilitate anybody in the government, you can send me a book. I'll ensure that I tell the minister that you have felicitated them and I have their shawl. But uh, books are most welcome. Anyway, it's my extreme privilege to be here at Thai's India Internet Day. As I stand before a gathering that includes startups, investors, industry leaders, ecosystem enablers, and distinguished individuals, I eagerly anticipate the enlightening discussions and insights that will unfold as we delve deep into the realm of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is on the brink of revolutionizing our world with intelligent machines taking on intricate cognitive functions such as thinking, perceiving, learning, problem solving and decision making. The concurrent advancements in data accumulation, analytics and computational power, AI is presenting unprecedented opportunities to complement and elevate human intelligence. This convergence has the potential to reshape our lives and work in profound ways. The paradigm shift brought by generative AI is altering the landscape of innovations, operations and work methodologies for companies and governments. A notable illustration of this transformation is ChatGPT boasting a user base exceeding 100 million. The application of generative AI empowers businesses to automate intricate tasks, expedite decision making, unearth high value insights and unlock scalable capabilities that are previously beyond our reach. The President's research reports that the global AI market size reached $454 billion in 2022 and is projected to surge approximately $2,575 billion by 2032. The AI revolution holds substantial significance for India, which is the world's fastest growing economy. Recognizing AI's potential as a transformational technology across multiple sectors, the governments alongside private entities and academia should channelize efforts to harness AI's potential for spurring innovation, driving economic growth and enhancing societal progress. According to a study conducted by the Indian Institute of uh, Management Ahmedabad, the successful adoption of AI could contribute up to 1.4 percent points to real GDP growth annually. AI stands as a potent tool to amplify productivity, fuel innovation, and fortify GDP growth. This integration across domains like healthcare, agriculture, manufacturing, and services holds the promise of boosting efficiency and competitiveness on national scale. Evidencing the, recogni uh, the recognition of evolving technological trends, the Indian government has formulated the National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence to foster an ecosystem that enriches AI research and adoption. Notably, according to NASCOM data, the AI employment landscape in India encompasses an estimated 416,000 professionals set to grow at a remarkable rate of around 25% uh, per annum. Furthermore, AI is projected to infuse an additional $957 billion into India's economy by 2035. As per Stanford AI Index report for 2023, Indian AI companies attracted $3.24 billion in funding during 2022, positioning India as the fifth highest recipient of AI investments. In our capacity as the government of Karnataka, we acknowledge and champion AI as a pivotal uh, enabler for advancing our digital economy, driving investments and fostering employment opportunities. Karnataka stands as the nucleus of technology and innovation and Bengaluru stands as a testament to our prowess as it ranks among the top five AI cities worldwide, clinching the fifth position in a study by tight framework listed in the Harvard Business Review. Moreover, Bengaluru prides itself in hosting world's second largest AI talent pool. The government of Karnataka has established centers of excellence, of excellence specializing in emerging technologies in collaboration with private anchor institutions. These centers of excellence spearhead initiatives across four dimensions, that is startups, ecosystem building, industry government, and research and development and academia. Our state government inaugurated the Art Park, a partnership with Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, designed to catalyze technology innovation in AI and robotics. In tandem with the World Economic Forum and IIIT Bengaluru, the government of Karnataka established the Center 
of uh, Center for Internet of Ethical Change uh, Things, addressing confluence of AI, IoT, and ethics. With a commitment to ethical underpinnings, this center serves as a platform for stakeholders to convene and forge an ecosystem. The ongoing initiative involves preparing a white paper on the ethical framework for governance of IoT, AI, and AI systems guiding our future endeavors. Our state government has also launched a deep tech cluster seed fund amounting to 25 crores dedicated to nurturing startups specializing in deep tech and AI. The journey towards becoming a fully developed nation marked by prosperity is multifaceted, encompassing a spectrum of challenges and many considerations like infrastructure, capacity building, and being consistent in sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is ripe with opportunities and the convergence of Bengaluru's tech prowess and the transformative potential of AI can be a beacon guiding us towards a more interconnected, innovative and prosperous world. As we engage in insightful conversations today, let us harvest the collective wisdom present in this room to shape the trajectory of global businesses and set a precedent for excellence that transcends border right here from Bengaluru. Thank you all for your attention and I look forward to the enriching discussions that lie ahead. I kept my speech as short as possible only for the fact that I'm here to listen and learn from you all. And I'm sure that uh, whatever discussions that have happened uh, through the day, you will be having something for the government to learn and implement. So I'd like to, uh, Mr. Madan told me that I need to give a keynote address and usually uh, you know that when politicians see the camera, we can't stop. So <laughs> I've decided uh, to keep the speech as less as possible. This was just to let you know what the government of Karnataka is looking at. And I'd love to hear from all of you what kind of uh, policies we should adapt, what kind of rules would you want us to uh, frame, and more importantly, what kind of ecosystem that you are looking for so that we can succeed together. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you for uh, the brief comments uh, and talking about the potential of AI and the role that the state can play. Uh, before we launch into the questions, also happy to share that uh, you know most of you may be aware uh, that Thai Bangalore, along with other chapters in Karnataka, will host the Thai Global Summit next year, TGS 2024. We're coming to Bangalore and and Mysore, and we're going to have the world's largest entrepreneurship festival here. And very delighted to share that uh, there's ringing enthusiasm and uh, endorsement from the state government. So watch out. What this space, this will be the first of many interactions, I'm sure, for us to build a much more vibrant entrepreneurial uh, culture here. We're also all planning a trip to TGS in Singapore in 2023, uh, which is happening in November, uh, alongside the Singapore FinTech Festival. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement, and we're really wanting to take this ecosystem to the next level. Uh, Bangalore is already Bangalore, as I was sharing. You know, after TGS 2024, our wish is that the Silicon Valley must be called as the Bangalore of the West, right? not, not Bangalore as the Silicon Valley of the East. Right? So that's the, that's the dream. Uh, we have another uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, love to open up the floor for any questions, thoughts, comments that any one of you may have. And uh, we will uh, continue this interaction, I'm sure, uh, you know, this is the beginning. So can I have some mics going around, please? And, and any thoughts? Yes. Good afternoon, sir. And thank you for such motivating uh, words. Um, I'm a nutritionist, and I understand that the last NFLG report said India, uh, the malnutrition is causing 4% of its GDP. Right? For us as an entrepreneurs, we definitely want to create a difference with AI. How do we get to the sector which needs the most? Uh, what support can be expected or how do we bring a balance between the rural and the urban sector because it can take our uh, bandwidth away. But what kind of support can be expected for entrepreneurs like us who are trying to make an impact by reducing the malnutrition burden and uh, reducing the burden of NCDs in real life? No, thank you so much. Uh, I get this question all the time ever since I've become the Minister for Panchayat Raj 
as well as the IT. Sir, one is rural, the other one is uh, uh, completely urban. How are you managing this uh, uh, thing? In fact, as soon as I came in, I was complaining to uh, Mr. Madan, saying, uh, he was saying it must be very hectic for you. I said, yeah, the problem is not physically being in these meetings. The problem is with the mind space. I have to just fight. I just fought with all the PDO associations and I'm coming and sitting here with all of you fighting with the entrepreneur <laughs> association. So anyway, uh, there is convergence, man. I mean, I don't, like I mentioned uh, in my talk, that using technology, using AI, if we are able to contribute back to the uh, uh, system, which is going to impact our GDP. So AI effectively used in various sectors like healthcare, uh, uh, malnutrition, and other uh, services that are required at the grassroots, at the bottom of the pyramid, is going to help the economy overall. So uh, answering your very specific question on what the government of Karnataka intends to do, or what I intend to do is, uh, we are having a center of excellence for life sciences, out of, uh, and also we also run the BBC, the Bio Innovation Center, if you are aware, wherein we discuss, uh, uh, wherein we pick up issues uh, that affect uh, the grassroots uh, level. So uh, very soon we'll be coming up with a framework for a center of excellence for uh, healthcare and medical devices, which I think you will fit in, number one. But we don't have to wait for that to happen. I'm coming up with uh, uh, Elevate program. I'm not sure how many people know Elevate here, where when the government of Karnataka gives you grant, not a loan, of up to 50 lakhs, up to 50 lakhs for you, uh, for you to, if you have an idea, it has to be a POC, a proof of concept, and if a proof of concept to a business incubator, or perhaps even you have a, you have a already a working. Uh, model that can be adopted by the government, why not? So we are going to start um, an elevate for social entrepreneurship and social impact. So uh, malnutrition definitely falls in that bracket. And uh, once probably, the give, just give me a month or so, we'll be coming up with the uh, criteria for that and please apply for that and I'm sure that it will be selected because malnutrition is a huge challenge for us and we'd love to see what you have. And going further, even if you're a startup or a small company uh, in biotech or health tech or any other uh, field, I'm also coming up with a preferential policy for uh, uh, procurement. So you're a startup and you want government to be your first customer, we'll be that also for you. So all you have to do is be a little patient with me. So I'll ensure that I'll ensure that startups like yours are given the space. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Akash Deep here. Uh, I just want to understand, like, uh, what government of Karnataka is doing to make the digital infrastructure accessible for persons with disability. The digital infrastructure for accessible for persons with disability. For, for the, uh, so uh, last time we had, uh, we uh, in fact, in, uh, during my previous tenure, we had actually. Uh, tied up for uh, uh, with uh, a couple of companies for uh, assistive technology for uh, the differently abled uh, uh, people. So, and post that we also, in my next tenure as a social welfare minister, we had also given um, close to, if I'm not mistaken, 15 crores to uh, have uh, uh, to for startups with social impact. So, in which disability was uh, differently able uh, technology, assistive technologies was the uh, priority. So, in the social impact uh, seed fund that we are coming up, definitely it's a part of that also. But if you have anything else you think that should be adopted uh, by the government, uh, that needs, uh, you need a trial, you need a pilot somewhere, you think you need a grant, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. I think just on that point, uh, you know, uh, we work closely with the Assistive Technology Foundation and I think what oh, you yes, suggested yes. is a good, uh, several of our charter members are a part of that. Uh, let us do a conversation amongst our founders and we'll come back to you with a note on what more. My only thing is, uh, we are not, the, uh, the government policies or the government framework is not as uh, 
evolving as the technology. So we are, our policies are always playing catch up. Mm -hmm. When I say ours, it's not only the government of Karnataka, anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Even the European Union recently passed uh, laws on the AI, trying to regulate it or whatever. So governments always play catch up. That's why the government should engage with people like yourselves, ecosystem like yourselves, so that we understand that how uh, fossilized our uh, policies are. So if you have anything, if you have a technology that you think is going to be a game changer in the sector, I think you should just reach out to the government. So uh, I mean, just not for the differently able, any social sector, anything. Because at the end of the day, government, any government has the appetite for your technology. And business-wise also, whether it is Microsoft, whether it is Google or anybody, government is their biggest customer. That nobody can deny. So if the government is, re is able to adopt it, it's scale. So uh, I, I mean that's an open invitation to try any time that you think that there is a technology or there's an entrepreneur uh, who needs some kind of a push within the government sector, irrespective of department, please have them reach out to me. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think that's a powerful offer and we will definitely take you up on that. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, so, I'm trying to work out a public private partnership, and uh, so, as, this, uh, the, especially this that I mentioned that government is trying to play catch up. I want to understand a little deeper why is that? Why the in house capability of any government is not that as fast or as uh, robust as the industry or the private sector? Because if we start regulating, what you do. Imagine I tell you what technology, what ways you have to use, what <laughs> you have to do, or which, what syllabus you have to do. It is not, uh, it's not the government's job to do that. Uh, he, like I, I keep giving you the, giving this example. Do you know Ola, Uber, Red Bus are all playing illegally right now in India? Because our transport policy does not include something like ride sharing. They don't have uh, seat sharing. <laughs> they don't have uh, uh, Rapido is illegal. If you go by the act, yeah. yeah. If you go by the act, Rapido is illegal. There's nothing called bike taxi concept in our acts. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi, perhaps we still follow the Telegraph Act, and it's just not India or Karnataka. Even in the West, it is it is uh, something similar. So that is why we have come up with something called the. Uh, <clears throat> Karnataka Innovation Authority. Unfortunately, that is not used as well as it should have. But let's say you have a policy that we are not ready for. But it's well within operating within the legal framework of the constitution or the law of the land. Why should we stop you? Let it rest there till we come up with a policy that will ensure that it is uh, better for the uh, ecosystem. So, uh, we don't know. Sir. Governments are I mean, government just like yourself or like your company doesn't know everything. Every, uh, it's always a learning process. It's uh, development cannot be still water. It has to be running water. It, uh, so from uh, services industry, we have, today we are talking about innovations and inventions means it is because we have evolved policies. But any, what any government should actually do is talk to its stakeholders before uh, coming out with a policy. That's why you see Karnataka always has a policy that is more futuristic than other states. We have a policy for probably, uh, for not having a policy also, the innovation authority is. Uh, so you are, tell me which, uh, how many states in India you know has an animation policy, has an electric vehicle policy, has a battery manufacturing policy, has a gaming policy, has a comics policy, a digital publishing uh, comics policy also we have, we have a biotech policy. So, and in spite of that, you are asking I am backward. Uh, whereas other states don't even know what we are doing. I have an AI policy. I have a look at my budget uh, this time. I have a center of, I am coming up with a center of excellence for artificial intelligence, machine learning, manufacturing, health science, medical devices, uh, quantum computing. Sab kar rahe bhaiya. Sab kar rahe. If you go to other states, I am sure no minister is going to sit like this and talk to you. I can assure you that. I can assure you that. 
that you, uh, you, you know a government is progressive when the government is talking to you. I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to listen, I'm willing to change. So, you should tell me if I'm doing something wrong, you should tell me this is not the right policy, change it. Give me justification, give me a wire frame, I will get it done. Because this is uh, India or any government in India should be by, off and for the people. So, you tell us, you are the people, you tell us what to do if there is something wrong that we are doing. Instead of telling that you don't know anything, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, this, is, this is truly what makes PNG PM. So, thank you. We'll take one last question. If there's anything in the house. Yes. Can we have the mic here, please? Hi, sir. My name is Aditi. I'm a journalist at Media Nama. Uh, the Karnataka government has spoken a lot about regulating misinformation and news online today. I was just curious to know whether technology will be used to evaluate that kind of information and if so, what kind? Absolutely. If I don't use technology, predictive analysis, um, and uh, preempting uh, fake news, false news, misinformation, malinformation, then there is no point in coming up with that idea at all. I have to also preempt. And there's enough tools, uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools that uh, can predict what what can happen or what will happen through malicious. Uh, uh, narratives and handles uh, that uh, do that. So definitely uh, use of technology is going to be the anchor for that, for the fact check unit. It's, it's going to be completely apolitical. It is going to be completely uh, based on uh, facts. The fact check unit is supposed to be based on facts. So we are going to debunk false narrative, fake narratives, misinformation that will lead to um, uh, chaos, uh, chaos in, the, in, in society. So, yes, we are very serious about using technology. We will, in fact, if, if anybody here is actually due, if you have um, any tool that is going to help the government do fact checks in vernacular languages or English, it'll, uh, we are open to uh, empaneling you in the thing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think with that, uh, we're coming to the end of the allotted time. Uh, so thank you so much for your openness uh, and to engage. I'm sure we'll come back to you with a whole lot of uh, ideas as we come along. Uh, we also wanted to take this opportunity with your presence here. Uh, August 21st, a few days ago, was World Entrepreneurs Day. So happy World Entrepreneurs Day, everybody. Uh, on the, in the last two years, on the World Entrepreneurship Day, uh, we've been releasing and we decided at Thai, at the Thai board, let's say, to acknowledge uh, individuals who have made stellar contributions to the city and to the entrepreneurial uh, energy that the city has and the, and the country has. And 2021, we had uh, seven awardees that included uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy, Nandan Nilekani, Mr. Premji, Kiran Masumdar Shaw, Pradeep Kar. Uh, so on and so forth. 2022, we announced the second list. We thought we'll use, uh, we did announce it on the 21st, we thought we'll use today uh, as the India Internet Day event as well to unveil the next list of, uh, of the Spirit of Thai. We called it the Spirit of Thai Awards, uh, where we all celebrate and, uh, and cheer our leaders and, and take inspiration from their own uh, journeys. So at the board, we debated, voted on a few names. And uh, sir, we wanted to wanted you to unveil that list today. We'll have a separate uh, uh, event, a large event uh, for the celebration. But before we start that, we'll just play a quick uh, uh, video on the spirit of Thai awards. Sir, maybe. Sir, I'm assuming I'm not invited for the celebration. You are. In fact, we the the implicit assumption is that we want you to come and give away the awards. <laughs>
that is just a, a precursor to the things so we have a list of names that we wanted you to. Yeah, you can announce the, the list of awardees for this year. Thank you so much. I have the privilege of announcing the distinguished awardees of 2023. Sri Anand Narayan, founder Mensa Brands. Sri Chris Gopal Krishnan, Chairman, Axelor Ventures, co-founder of Infosys. Ms. Nevruti Rai, MD and CEO, Invest India, former country head, Intel India. Sri B.V. Nairu, Chairman, Karnataka Digital Economy Mission. Sri Ranjan Pai, Chairman, Manipal Education and Medical Group. Professor Sadagopan, Founding Director, IIIT Bengaluru, Chairman BOG, IIIT DM, Kanchipuram. Ms. Vani Kola, Managing Director, Kalari Capital. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have Vani here, so Vani, thank you. <laughs> a, a more formal event will follow shortly. Sir. Bhavish was one of our awardees last year. So, so with that, Thank you so much for your presence and uh, thank you.